Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified 6-inch scale Hasbro Pulse exclusive Dr. Mindbender. Really cool figure, deluxe figure with deluxe packaging. So let's check it out. As you can see at the top, a little warning, ages 4 plus, G.I. Joe Classified Dr. Mindbender by Hasbro. Like I said, deluxe packaging looks really cool. Here's mine better on the outside. Got the Cobra logo here. One side, some Cobra insignia. This is the 43rd figure in the G.I. Joe classified line. Back side, Mindbender. Ton of different images of the G.I. Joe universe. Now, packaging is very elaborate. Kind of pull it out. Got the Cobra logo here. Back, same stuff. Packaging opens up to expose Mindbender and a ton of accessories. Absolutely fantastic. So no further ado, let's open him up. All right. Now that we have this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with quite a bit of cool stuff. He has a severed, shriveled up hand, two containers, for the hand or the brain or whatever body parts you want to put in there. A little canister for the side of his hip. A bunch of caps or charges for his weapons. Two pistol type things. A skull, a brain, and then two of these weapons that have a tube attached to them. Not even exactly sure what those things are, but it all looks really good. Before I look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Dr. Mindbender pretty much a mad scientist that works for the Cobra side of things. He's going to be doing a lot of experiments, making some of the robotic army builders for Cobra, like the BAT. So let's take a look at him. Start with his head here. He's got a stereotypical mustache twirling villain. Looks like an old sci-fi guy from the 50s, if not earlier. He's got the monocle, long mustache, bald head, Going further down, shirtless, but he's got this long flowing cape. He's got a holster for one of his pistols, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Very sort of old school sci-fi look to him, and I'm enjoying it a lot. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and let's start off with his guns. He comes with these two pistols. First one here, more or less a regular type pistol. It's all done in black. Scope and detail is decent, but could use a little bit of paint variety. Then we have this other pistol. Looks more like sort of a ray gun. It's got a little silver thing at the top here. Here he is holding his regular pistol. Now, I notice this thing has a hole in the front. You can add some blast accessories from other G.I. Joe figures or the little cap that this guy came with. Here's the little cap or charge in front of the pistol. Dr. Mindbender here can hold both these sidearms at the same time. And here he is, holstering that pistol. And here he is, holding that sort of sci-fi looking pistol. Now let's look at his other guns. We have a contraption that's going to attach to his side, his belt. A tube that'll go from that to the gun. These little caps are chargers for the guns. Now these are not traditional guns. They look like a sci-fi type weapon. Got the hole in the front to attach those little caps or charges. Looks like maybe they're going to be pumping stuff, whether it's rays or maybe body fluids. Who knows? Yeah, they're probably just some guns related to mind control or mind bending. Here he is with the item attached to his side. Then holding the first one of these weapons. Trigger figure fits into the trigger area just fine. Nice sci-fi type gun. 
Let's go and attach the hose tube. Here's Mindbender with both the charge and the tube attached to this weapon. And here he is with that other weapon or device. He's got a little cap there at the front, tube going all the way around to the contraption on his side. Decided to run the tube behind his cape that time and under his arm. And of course, he can hold both these weapons at the same time. Now it's got all of his different body parts and places to display them. He's got these two vials in the back. One's a little bit taller, one a little smaller. Then he has a human skull here. A uh, cool thing about this is the top part is removable. Put the brain inside, take the brain out. Bottoms are wrapped up. Then we have a human brain here. It's got a little thing at the bottom. You'll be able to plug it into the base of these display containers. And he has this shriveled up hand. Looks like it's got some tubes coming out of it. A little area, a little plug into the bottom of the display case. And he has these two display cases, transparent red. You can open it up. A little hole here to plug in the base of the brain of the hand. Could see myself getting a lot of use out of these things. Here's the human skull with the brain inside. You can even reattach the cap. Not a perfect fit, but it works. Here's the brain inside of one of these display cases. And here's the hand inside the taller of the two cases. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and its accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, staying at about 6.4 inches tall, which can translate to about 16 centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, you're gonna rotate from side to side. You can look up and down about that much. Pretty good there. Can't really tilt his head from side to side. Shoulders on a ball joint goes about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area. Increasing the range of motion a little bit. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists can't rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Traditional ab crunch in his torso here. Ball joint is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Legs, complete as the splits. Ball joints, drop down hips. You can see they drop down, push them back up in there. Forward, about that far. Back, not much. He's got thigh cut. Double jointed knees, go back all the way. He's got a boot cut. And his ankle here, forward and back. Tilt rock. No traditional rotation, that's what the boot cut's for. Here's Dr. Mindbender in his laboratory. This is where he creates the Cobra BAT, all their bats. Here's a couple of these Cobra robots. They're getting programmed, ready for war. Dr. Mindbender is an expert at programming these robots. He even uses other Cobra robots to help create these troops. Here's a covert bat in the assembly process. And here's a close-up of Dr. Mindbender himself. Now let's check them out. Next is another action figures. Starting off with some other Hasbro G.I. Joe classified figures. Here he is. Next to my most recent G.I. Joe Cobra acquisition. I got these at Target last night. Four of the Python Patrol Viper variants. And here with some more recent Cobra releases. Then next to some earlier Cobra releases. And now with some recently released Joe figures. Here is my entire Cobra collection. I believe I have every single one and every single variation except for the light blue Cobra Commander, Regal Cobra Commander, I believe he's called, and then the original Cobra Island Target Exclusive Viper. I was hoping to get three of those guys back in the day, but never happened. I'd be happy for at least one nowadays. Let me know if you see anything else missing out of this collection. Now let's check them out. Next is some action figures from different various companies. To see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know lines you can mix them with. Since he's a Hasbro figure, they're typically the 6-inch scale. 
I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect. They work way larger. But first, let's check him out with some of his Hasbro brothers. Here he is, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. Then, with some more Hasbro figures. These are from Fortnite's Victory Royale line. And here he is, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Then, next to some SH figure arts action figures. And here, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. Here's Mindbender, next to a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. And now, next to some Jazz Wars wrestling figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestlers. And here he is, standing with some NECA figures. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And now, with some McFarlane toys. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. And finally, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. Overall, he's a very nice figure. These deluxe G.I. Joe figures are amazing, just very expensive. His accessories are plentiful. The sculpt and paint job are great. He has a signature, old school, mustache twirling sci fi type villain. Articulation is everything you'd expect from a Hasbro G.I. Joe figure. If I rate this guy, Teetering on a 7.5 or an 8, very, very nice figure, great accessories, great execution, and looks great with the other GHOs. He's unique for a Cobra figure, doesn't have that militaristic, sort of uniform look to him. He's a unique one, that's for sure. So this is D Hunter, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.